So let's talk first about medical emergencies. That's one of the main things we want to focus on today. And your iPhone can help if you are in a medical emergency. The, there's two things you want to happen if you're in a medical emergency. You want to make sure that uh, vital information uh, about you gets uh, communicated. I really like your mustache. Really? Just a second. Medical emergencies. All right. Okay. All righty. Thanks, Brandon. All right. Was there a question? Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Yep. So there's two things if you have a medical emergency. First is you want to make sure that uh, vital medical information about you gets communicated to the first responders there to taking care of you so you get the best care possible. But you also want to make sure that your emergency contacts know that you've had an emergency uh, so that they can uh, help with the care that you're being given. You wanna make sure someone that you trust is in contact with the people taking care of you, especially if you're unconscious and not able to direct your care, care yourself. So those are the main things we're gonna talk about in the first part of the class. And I'll start with the medical ID. Uh, the medical ID is part of the health app, and that is where you put that information that you want to be relayed to first responders that are taking care of you if you do have a medical emergency. So the health app looks like this. So go ahead and find that on your phone. If you can't find it, let me know and I can help you get there. I'm gonna go ahead and open mine. So is everybody answer everybody if you if yours wasn't like mine if it wasn't in the summary you'll need to touch the summary at the bottom so open the health app and get the summary if anybody's not here or has any questions as always unmute and let me know but we're gonna think we're gonna touch up in the upper right hand corner where your initials are and that'll bring you to this screen and here's the medical ID right there. So if you touch on that medical ID, it will open your medical ID. I've changed it a little bit since the last time I was here, but that's okay, we can deal with it. So this is where your medical information is stored. Let's talk about how you get it in there. And to do that, you have to touch on the edit, again, up in the upper right-hand corner. So I'm gonna hit edit. So if you uh, haven't put anything in there yet, uh, I think there's one extra step where it says create medical ID, and then it'll bring you to this screen where you can enter information or edit any information you may have entered before. I'm gonna go over the fields and, and uh, explain what they are and why they're in here a little bit. Uh, you probably just need to wait and fill this out after class. You probably aren't going to be able to uh, fill this out while, while we're doing it. But of course, it has your name. That should carry over. And then there's a place to enter a, a picture. I'm going to hit edit. So you can either take a picture with your phone, take a selfie, or you can go to your pictures and, and grab a picture of yourself. The reason uh, Apple says to put a picture in there is that it's a Pretty slim chance, but there's always a possibility that uh, someone comes that takes care of you and they've got the wrong phone. Uh, in this case, they've got a picture of you. They can make sure the picture of, of, uh, in your medical ID looks like the person that's lying unconscious on the ground. You know, that is kind of the worst case scenario we'd be talking about here. You've had a medical emergency, you're unconscious, uh, maybe you tripped and fell on the sidewalk. And so the, the this is just a way to make sure they're taking care of the the right person with the right information. Date of birth is important to know your age because that's important for some of the, uh, the dosing and other care they might be giving you. Medical conditions, you know, these are things that are important in an emergency situation. There's really no harm in putting everything in here, but if you've got arthritis in your left wrist, that's probably not something that the first responders need to know about. But if you have, uh, 
COPD or if you uh, have a pacemaker or other conditions that is important for them to know about. So certainly make sure you get those important things that things that you would tell them about if you were awake, uh, but you can't tell them since you're unconscious. Make sure that those are all in here, recent surgeries, uh, anything that might affect you know, how they're gonna take care of you. You don't want them to use a defib on you if you've got a pacemaker, for example. The next field is, this is just kind of a general medical notes where you can put any information that's not in any of these predefined fields we're gonna go over. But one good thing to put in there is your uh, primary care physician's name and phone number. Because again, that person probably knows more about you than anyone else. So they can reach out to your primary care physician if they have questions and just to let them know that you've had an emergency situation. Allergies and reactions. So certainly anything you're allergic to, especially any medications they might give you, but also what's the reaction? You know, if you just have a minor reaction to it, a uh, slight rash, then they decide they really need to give you that uh, medication, then they'll go ahead and do it. If you go into anaphylactic shock, then they're make, gonna make sure they don't give you that medication regardless, or they've got the appropriate uh, counteracting medications available. So go ahead and list anything you're allergic to and uh, what your reaction is if you are exposed to that item. Medications, uh, sort of like with conditions, uh, you can certainly list everything that you're on, including uh, over-the-counter supplements. And that's probably the best thing to do, but certainly start with the things that are most important. So for example, I put turmeric in here. Turmeric is a blood thinner. So if, uh, depending on what happened to me, they need to give me a blood thinner, it's important for them to know that I'm already taking something that has a blood thinning effect. Blood type, important, obvious, in case they need to do a blood transfusion. If you don't know what your blood type is, just call your primary care physicians. They probably know what it is. You can put that in here. Uh, whether you're an organ donor, Height and weight, again, is for dosing. They, they need to know that to make sure they give you the proper dose of any medications they're administering. Primary language isn't so important here, but if you're traveling abroad and uh, you don't speak the language where you are, this is important for them to know because they may be trying to talk to you and you, you're not responding and it's mainly because you don't understand them, not because you're uh, having problems. So this is all your, your medical information that they need to know. This is the second part we talked about is uh, who should they get in contact with. And this is where you can list your emergency contacts. Uh, I'm not sure what the maximum is. You should put at least two. I know it goes up to at least five. So again, in case they can't reach the first person on the list, they can go to the second person and the third person. And these can be used a couple of different ways. I'm gonna show you different ways how this information is used, but uh, if they got your phone, they can just touch there and call them. There's also ways to automatically contact these people. But if they're not in here, then they can't reach them.